Hi everyone, Alan here. Today we're going to take a look at a wasp nest. Everyone is probably familiar with wasps. I collected this nest from under my deck and placed it in my freezer. I've just thought it out to show you what's inside. The wasps gather wood fiber and paste them together into sheets the same way that we would make paper. This paper is very thin. Here are some of the wasps that came out of the nest when I collected it. Many people call wasps bees, but they are not bees. Bees are in a separate family from wasps and hornets. Here is a photo of a wasp, a bumblebee, and a honeybee. Bees and bumblebees are hairy, making them good pollinators because the pollen sticks to them. Wasps do not have hairs. Bees, bumblebees, and wasps can sting, and many of them have distinctive yellow and black markings, which means danger. No danger today. The nest and wasps are frozen. Late at night, I dressed up in my complete bee suit, including head net, and gloves. I placed my long-handled butterfly net under the nest and used a long-handled ice scraper to scrape the nest off the undersurface of the deck flooring. The nest dropped neatly into my net, which I quickly flipped to close the opening. The net then went directly into the freezer for three days. This is not something I recommend people to do. Today, we are going to open up this nest with an electric carving knife. I have to admit that I only use this knife for cutting foam rubber into unique shapes and to cutting into wasp nests. I think wasps are interesting. They're social insects. Most years I enjoy observing the nests and their daily activities, but when they are in the wrong place where people are getting stung, I find out that I have to move the nest. The wasps that built this nest are small in size. In Vermont, we have 19 species of wasps. They can be identified mostly by the pattern of yellow and black markings on the abdomen. Let's take a look inside the nest. We will be looking for the queen. Here's a piece of capped comb with developing worker wasp pupae inside. The queen wasp lays eggs which hatch into larvae. Workers spend most of their time feeding larvae. After each larva is fully grown, the cell is capped and the larva turns into a pupa. If we take a look here, you can see a stacked comb on top of each other. There's a narrow stem that connects the two combs together. Oh, here is the queen. She's quite a bit larger than the workers and we'll take a look at her later. The stacked comb is connected to each other <clears throat> by a narrow stem in the middle. <clears throat> you can see the long slender cells here that contain wasp pupae inside. Here's a bottom view of the comb where you can see capped brood cells. Any empty cells here would be used by the queen to lay eggs. It'll be hard to see some of the things on the tray here. Some are pupae that came out of the cells when we opened up the nest. <clears throat> there are probably 30, 40, 50 wasps in the nest when we opened it. Here you can see the queen compared with a worker wasp. The queen is much larger than the rest. 
Here's a picture of the queen right next to a worker wasp taken under my microscope. Both the queen and the worker wasp have stingers. Here is a microscopic view of the comb where you can see developing larvae in each of the cells. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I wish we could have all been together at camp, but I hope to see you all next year. Bye.